Think. Act. And prosper. You are now tuned into the Money Level Show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Money Level Show. It is Daryl Dominic, and today I got a special guest coming all the way from Baltimore, Maryland. I got my guy JT, and so JT does a lot of a lot of things. He does some uh, coins. Uh, he does jewelry with coins. He's also a precious metals um, investor and, and holder for a store of value. And so today I just want to bring this to you guys so that you guys get to see other people and how they are uh, structuring their lives to build wealth and how they are thinking, acting and prospering. And so that is what we're about. And so today we're going to tap in. So uh, got my guy JT here. So JT, uh, go ahead and tell the audience just a little bit about yourself and and how you began to be awakened to this precious metal space. Awesome. How you doing, guys? My name is JT from JT Corn Rings, Johnson Toe from here from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm born and raised. Um, this was something real dear to me, getting to the precious metals. Um, a couple of years ago, I ran across an article and the article stated that the median black household in 2032 will be worth zero. Um, that kind of um, put me at alarm put me on the lawn and made me think about, okay, what do I need to do to make sure that I ensure the future of my children? Mm -hmm. um, 30, a um, couple of years, 15 um, years from now, I want to make sure that my youngest, which is my seven-year-old, has a good start. I have a 20-year-old by 35. I want her to make sure she's well on her way to have a good start. Yeah. Um, so if you look at the median household and you look at worth zero, and the average today, you're looking at fifteen hundred dollars, and that's not including the couch mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah, grandma yeah. may have left us, and less than five hundred dollars saved. So when I start looking at those, I start finding myself looking for alternatives, trying to find things to get into that will increase in value. Um, if it couldn't be a house, if I wasn't at that step, I'm um, at that present time. Yeah, yeah. Precious metals was the next thing. Um, I always loved coins. I love collecting, um, but I wasn't into collecting for the content. It was more newsmatic. Um, mm -hmm. Then when I start learning about um, silver, um, the spot price, when I start learning about gold, which is basically my favorite, um, I start to get a bigger interest. So once I start getting into community, I said, what can I do to, to spark this? And that's where the corn rings came into uh, opportunity for me to build something that's a hobby and into a business and also keep my love of precious metals and collecting coins. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, so why coins? I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, they, they don't really think about uh, gold and silver. And so I'm, I'm a very, uh, uh, in, interested in history. And so I usually go <laughs> back to history. I mean, there's nothing right. new under the sun. And mm -hmm. so what, what kind of, uh, obviously you, you've struck interest in, in coins and, and being a coin collector and things like that. But what were some of the things that you learned uh, mm -hmm. about coins that really shaped your, your perspective on how important they are to uh, storing value or, or whatnot? Now you hit the nail on the head with that. And, and that was that the history part. Um, I love history. And that's one reason why I got into doing the coins. Um, but I wanted to kind of share from a different approach with the corn rings. Um, okay, you may have a corn like um, from Liberia, which my family is from. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at Liberia and you understand the history of um, freed slaves going there, but it was people there prior, right? So as you go on, you start understanding what was um, the economy like in Liberia. You start looking and say, what did they produce? Well, rubber. They used rubber in order to use for tires. So Firestone was there. Now, during them years, the Firestone was there. The economy was great. So mm -hmm. you look at that year, anywhere from 1962 to 1971, what type of content was used for their coins? Silver. 
when their economy started going bad around the Civil War, what kind of content was used for their, their money? Copper nickel. So mm-hmm. usually you find that the wealth of a nation kind of change at a particular time when something is going on, some civil unrest, um, economy's going down, there's no trade, there's no, the people are not working. So that kind of sparked my interest, just at that, that small example. So if you study history, you know how wealthy a nation is based off its, its money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And that, and that kind of reminds me of just, you know, the U.S. when we went off the gold standard in, in 71 one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and how how that impacted us and how we've ran up so much debt levels. And I, I keep mentioning this statistic. So from 1776 right. to 1996, we only had five trillion in debt. Now we are 27 trillion in debt. Going, so going straight last, to 30. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, like the last, you know, two decades you know, has, has been, been a wild ride, you know? And so, um, so definitely interesting when you study like the history, how, how money has worked and all of those different things. And so that's interesting that you bring up copper and nickel. Uh, what, what's kind of your, your perspective on, on those metals? Well, copper, um, I look at that as being a beautiful, um, a metal, um, it's use in the industry. So it always will have some use. Um, people, do not call it a precious metal. Yeah, yeah. But it is basically this metal that um that's going to be used based off just the industry of you know of plumbing, um electric electrical um mm-hmm. uh, the appliances and all. So it's always something that I think is is still good to, to stack. Um, I have copper myself. Um, not yeah, yeah. at a, a large supply because you got to look at the storage. Um, but I do make my rings out of it. So and I also have some some coins. I mean, I'm sorry, some rounds that I, um, that I keep for my personal stack. So yeah, yeah. I, um, nickel, um, I'm not a collector of nickel, but I know I would probably invest in nickel because in nickel was probably one of the, um, major components of the batteries that's going to yeah. be used in electrical vehicles. So that's exactly. something that I would probably look into in the future. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, uh, you know, for me, I, I've been buying a little bit of copper, you know, and uh, for me, like I'm very pro Second Amendment. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, I have uh, firearms yeah. and then looking at your like, brass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you, you, the metals are used in everything, you know, and so like, uh, right. you know, I just get that just like just to have it, you know, uh, I mean, it's really cheap and, and I see the uh, price of it going up um, and even with nickel. You know, mm-hmm. I've been learning about that in the battery. So I've been investing in like uh, lithium stocks. Lithium stocks, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Lithium stocks and, and nickel just because the demand for electric vehicles has been going up. And uh, I think California came out and said they want. That's right. Uh, it was it 85, 80 percent of their. All the new homes with, with solar panels. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And so that that's that's really interesting. And um and even thinking about just commodities, you know, I, I've recently done some uh, research on oil and 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 how uh, and how important oil is. And, uh, you know, obviously we have a lot of green energy uh, movement and all of those different things. And I began to learn like oil is used in everything from, mm-hmm. you know, the trucks that import, export the boats, the trains, the planes, you know, um, you know, it's it's really hard to not live without oil, even for solar panels, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the mining of the coal, the mining of, you know, everything. You you need tractors for that. You know, and so oil oil has been used for for a lot, a lot of the basic things that we need. And, and you know, that being a, a commodity as well. And so true. I've been kind of looking at into, you know, kind of oil and and um, and uh you know, some, some electric stocks and things like that, just to kind of, you know, have a diverse, a diversity in the stock market and everything, but I'm not, right. I'm more, I'm more of a bolt. Uh, I'm more of a, a gold and silver bug as opposed to like a stock yeah. guy though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning though. I'm learning the same. I'm learning the same. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So uh, which one is your favorite metal and why? <laughs> um, I love gold. I wish I can get more gold, um, but based mm-hmm. off the price, I'm limited. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> um, and I love silver um, because I can I can afford it. I can, mm-hmm. I can I can I can stack a lot more of it, um, yeah. and it does well. I do well with silver because I use it for my corn rings. Mm-hmm. A lot of my 
95% uh, of all my orders are um, three nine silver. Yeah, yeah. Um, gold, gold because it's tested, tried, and true um, for over five thousand years. Um, most most definitely, I have not been here for all five thousand, but um, for the years that I've been, gold has been one of those things that has been put in the forefront that people respect, and it holds your holds your money, it holds your wealth, and we know that everything it increases, uh, it protects us against inflation. So if I had a large amount of money, um, over 50000 or more, I would definitely put it in gold because it would be there for protection. And yeah, as you know, for things like a crisis like this, you want to put your money in something that you know, at least this part is safe. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you can build for a later day. So yeah, I, yeah. I would say gold for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I, I think about... Um... You know, because I, I love gold as well, you know, and gold is is a little bit pricey, but you can definitely get something, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether that's the one tenth of a grams or a gram for like, you know, 70, 80 bucks, depending on the premiums and everything. But uh, you can definitely get something. But gold is something that you can control, you know, and obviously, you know, with our money uh, being fiat, uh, right. fiat currency is not backed by anything, but just the government's word. Um, mm -hmm. you definitely want to have something that you can control and not necessarily something that's manipulated by the federal reserve, whether they right. lower interest rates or all, you know, all this different stuff is so much manipulation. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you, uh, recently read that story of, uh, JP Morgan getting just a slap on the wrist for, uh, or was it a, yeah. a billion dollars? A billion dollars <laughs> of spoofing. They've been, um, been accused of spoofing for some time. Um, not one time, but I think over five times, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. So manipulation is the key. Um, and they they got caught. Um, their excuse, I believe, is that some employees, um, not the whole company in whole, but you know yeah. how that how the um the word is is trickled down to the people who need to do it. Yeah, and, um, definitely. So I mean, yeah, but they're not the only banks. There's many banks that um, I'm sure got caught for the same crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all. You know? And so just to explain that, y'all. Uh, so J.P. Morgan was uh, fined a billion dollars for spoofing uh, and manipulating the price of gold by uh, uh, shorting calls and awesome. all of those different things uh, and, and manipulating the gold price based on that. So what they would do is they would put a huge order in to sell gold at a cheaper price than what it was valued at. Mm -hmm. And then that would cause people to sell off their gold because they felt that gold was going down in value. Yeah. And so this, this is what banks have been doing. Uh, and uh, it makes you wonder why. And I mean, obviously we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today, but it's, it's definitely interesting in looking at yeah. how, how banks are trying to manipulate the price of gold and, mm -hmm. uh, and its value. And, and it makes you just wonder why, you know, if gold is, is worthless, like, you know, Dave Ramsey says, then then why why would you be manipulating the, the price of it? I, I don't understand that. Yeah. I mean, you had to sit down and think, like, you know, we have the, the puppets. If yeah. I can say that about um, Dave Ramsey, who works for the, this financial situation, which is going on. He he has a, a lot of interest set in preaching that that um, that mode. Mm -hmm. you know, and selling these products. So um, keeping people away from gold. Gold is definitely needed because, like I said, every country, when a crisis are getting ready for a crisis, they put the, they park their money because they don't want it lost. Mm -hmm. um, and, as we know, what we say in the stacking community, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Yeah. Um, if, if more people would go to gold, you know what I'm saying, it would, it would, it would break the system, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it's one of those things that a commodity that I know it doesn't produce profits like um, Warren Buffett says. Uh, I know it, it doesn't, um, it does, it's not like the stock market, but it holds, it holds you know, your wealth in, um, mm -hmm. in a place. It's safe. It's a safeguard. So I think it's needed. Yeah. Um, so you have to look at it in that light. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, uh, you know, kind of, I've been kind of processing uh, Warren Buffett's, um, you know, uh, that those statements that he would make, but then, you know, he went and put 500 million in gold. And, and what I've been researching is like, when you yeah. own gold stocks, you have to have a certain amount of money in the gold stocks to go and claim the gold, you know? And mm -hmm. so like, you know, for me, like I buy a stock here and there, 
but it's not enough for me to go to the company and, and say, hey, I want my gold, you know, oh, my stocks right. that I have. But Warren Buffett put enough money in there where he could actually go and, and get the physical gold. I mean, and, wow. you know, he's he's more of a, uh, you know, a business guy anyway. I mean, he loves to invest in businesses. So I, I imagine that was a compromise. It's just like, OK, this yeah. is a business. I can claim the gold when I need it. You know, he mm-hmm. understands in, how inflation works. And I mean, for him to make that move and to kind of go against, you know, some things that he said in the past or continuously said, you know, that's a big yeah. statement. Well, we know from from um, his dad was a, a, a gold gold lover and mm-hmm. big and precious metals. And we also know that Warren, Warren Buffett, he dabbled in silver as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the Egyptian billionaire, um, Nagwib um, Nasir, not, mm-hmm. he's an Egyptian billionaire worth, I think, 1.8 billion or 2.8 billion, I think, 2.8 billion. Mm-hmm. Um, he puts his money also in um, gold miners, but he owns the miners. Um, they mine, I think, in um, Australia. Um, and, and in Africa, and he put half of his net worth inside a gold miners. Now you got to look at it. How I believe Warren Buffett may have, um, when he put his, his company um, invested in um, Barrick. The, the yeah, Barrick, the, um, the, the gold company, right? It's a it's a it's a company that mines gold. It it produces the gold and sells the gold, so it makes profit. Mm-hmm. And in and in crisis, he knows people are gonna run to that gold. Yep, yep. So yep. it it fits his model. It's not really it doesn't stray. Mm-hmm. He goes where there's profit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he knows for a fact that hey, people are gonna run to that gold. So let me go ahead and gather um, mm-hmm. some stake. The same thing as I'm um, not with um, Cyrus. That's his name, the Egyptian billionaire. He's like, hey, I'm gonna put my I'm gonna park my money here, and I'm gonna produce as much gold as possible. And I know people are going to run to it and that's going to keep me, keep me afloat. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and, and I, I've been kind of like, you know, me being a hip hop head, you know, uh, and doing music, like, you know, I've always looked at like, oh yeah, I want a chain, you know, I want a gold chain and I, you know, I'll go to K jewelers and see like the 10, the, the 12, 14 K. And then, you know, once I really started getting into gold, you know, mm-hmm. I started seeing like how in India they got 22 carat. You know, and I'm like, yeah, Karen, I'm like, dang, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of gold. And so I, I really started to see like research, yeah. like, you know, because coins, are, you know, obviously, you know, metals are always, uh, you know, whether governments manipulate them or whatnot, we can, you know, look at the silver coins in, um, and, and currently in circulation with uh, nickels and, and uh, dimes and all of that. And how you can see there's copper and o- other metals that, that were replaced, that replaced the silver. And they, I think they did that in 1964, sometime around there when mm-hmm. coins used to be actually uh, almost pure silver. Yeah. 90% silver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And so I, I've been kind of looking at that. And then when you get the jewelry, you know, you get the 10K or the, or the 14K and they got what brass or some some other metals. And uh, they, alloy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Are, mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, you still you have the, the beauty of, you know, jewelry making. You have, you know, you got the hollow, you have the solid. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have people who have the 10K, the 14K, the 22, 24 is rare. But India, it's very thin. It, it definitely can. Um, scratch and you may cause some da- slight damage to it. Like I, I kind of fear sometimes, even though the American Gold Eagle is is kind of you know fragile, it still has that copper in there, which gives it strength, so it's good for jewelry. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you don't have to worry about it like the Canadian maple leaf, which is four nines um, um, gold. So um, it's one of those things you just want to get something that's durable. Um, yeah, yeah. And you know, gold doesn't tarnish. Um, I just like it for that fact. And like I said, it's, I have a solid gold when it's not the big dookie chain like we had back in the yeah, yeah. hip hop back in the day. The rope but chains. It, yeah, but it serves as, as a small rope, a mm. little tug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's 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 good. Um, you know, and I, I've been kind of like thinking about that, like, man, I, I want to get the 22K, you know. So sometimes I'll be looking uh-huh. at stuff like that, but I'm just like, I'm kind of you know, skeptical on it in a way. Cause it's like, okay, I'm ordering it online. It's coming from India. Like, I don't know, mm. you know, uh, 
if the company is legit or or what, you know, how do I find that out? And so I, I've been kind of hey, you know, hesitant to pull that trigger on that. Yeah, you may have to find a, a associate associate that you that may know from that's from there that can help you out. I have I work in the medical field, so I have some supervisors that are from India, mm-hmm. and they they invest and they they may purchase gold heavily. Um, they have bars and stuff. Um, yeah, and they've yeah. been they've been doing it for years. And and when you watch, see that jewelry from their their earrings to their necklace to their rings, you see this beautiful um, gold. You know, the mm-hmm. color of it is is, is 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 a lot different than what we see um, here in the states. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they and it adorns their body. So yeah, you definitely. may have to you had to build that connection um, with someone um, from there. Yeah, and yeah, it may it may, be, may be a little easier. Yeah, I got I got a friend of mine. He's actually from Iraq and he was telling me how, uh, you know, a, a lot of places in the Middle East, you can like Dubai, you can buy a, a little gold bar out of a vending machine, <laughs> you, you know? Wow. I was like, I was like, wow, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't know if he was joking with me or what, but I was like, you can buy a gold bar out of a, a vending machine. Is it is it that is it like that over there? You know, it's another it's, level. Well, yeah. well, you got a place where you got more billionaires, millionaires and billionaires in, in the world. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess you can do things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, right. uh, what, what's your what's your thoughts on uh, precious metals? Like, do you feel like uh, they are uh, overvalued or undervalued right now? I, I know, um, you know, obviously, you know, I don't encourage anyone to like just, you know, wait until it drops. You know, it's like, okay, you, you want this regardless of the price, you know, because it's something physical and in your hand. And so what's your thoughts on the, uh, the overvaluation versus undervaluation of, of precious metals? I think that um, precious metals are definitely undervalued um, right now. Um, I think that we, we talked about it earlier about the, the price being suppressed. Mm-hmm. It's being suppressed for a reason. Um, now it helps out people who can continue to buy, who can afford those prices. You know, like we can we can buy silver now. We can right now take twenty five dollars, well maybe not twenty five dollars a day, but um maybe thirty dollars <laughs> and yeah, buy yeah, an yeah. American <laughs> silver American silver eagle. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, so you can you can take thirty dollars, one hundred and twenty dollars, and you can buy some uh, some silver, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can take eighty dollars and buy a gram of gold mm-hmm. just to start off. If you want to start off, right? There's a reason why. Silver has not spiked up to that glory number of fifty, right? It can be a manipulation. Uh, I was um, looking at a, a video with the um, chairman of Majestic uh, Miners, and um, he made this one point. He says the, the silver and the precious metal um, industry would flourish if only IT companies like Apple would take over. Mm-hmm. the price will go out the roof. Why? Because there's so much lost in the recycling bins. Mm-hmm. They, 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 there's not the technology really to get it back. Yeah, yeah. And, and miners are having an issue with, um, with um, health conditions and, 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 and getting out the metals safely. Mm-hmm. But if, if the industries which use it the most now the electrical cars down to computers and other um, that industry, if they would invest just buying the $16 billion it takes to buy the silver industry, the copper, the zinc, we would probably see silver become that much more valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been seeing that uh, Elon Musk has been uh, having some trouble finding uh, nickel miners for, uh, for Tesla. And so, Mm -hmm. You know, some people are speculating that, you know, he may have to come over to the silver side, you know, and right. things like that. So it's, it's definitely it almost seems like it's only a matter of time rather than uh, if it's going to happen or not. I believe his name is Keith Newmeyer, who's a chairman of um, Majestic um, Metals. And he made that point. Um, it may be a kilo of silver in, 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 in a Tesla. He doesn't know for sure because no industry are letting out those numbers because if they let those numbers up, out they let people know how much they need silver Mm -hmm. so once those true numbers come out we'll see really the value of where silver and and gold should be 
But if the industry spikes it up too high, guess who won't be able to afford it? The yep. consumers. You would have to boost everything else up. So there's a reason why it's suppressed. Is yeah, it yeah. for our benefit? Maybe. Is it for our detriment? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's interesting. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I definitely uh, think that gold is undervalued. Um, and a lot of times people may think it's overvalued because they look at it in terms of uh, the dollar and the dollar has lost so much value. If the dollar so didn't much. lose as much value, you could afford gold. You know, uh, I mean, I, I think uh, the early 1900s, 1913, one dollar was worth twenty six dollars of goods mm-hmm. and services today. So if the dollar hasn't lost 96 percent of its value over the course of time, the course of the last century, um, you know, you could afford gold and it, it would it would not be um, overvalued. You know, how but, much how much was an ounce of gold back then? Like 20 bucks. Yeah, it's 20 bucks when they did the confiscation, but it may have been a little bit cheaper than that before then. Um, and so I have to look at those numbers. But uh, when they did the gold confiscation, they they uh, gave the people, I believe it was 20, 67 or something like that, an ounce. Okay. Uh, and obviously we see an ounce of gold at, you know, hovering around 1900. Yeah, yeah. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's you know, I, I would rather have my money in gold and yeah. You know, and obviously, if you pass that down to your kids or grandkids or whoever, you know, mm-hmm. they, they would have been sitting pretty nice right now. Pretty much. I, I have a, a friend and she told me that her, her father left her a gold coin. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish my dad left me a gold coin, but I mean, that's cause I, I'm assured <laughs> that he could have gained. He could have maybe bought that coin at that time for 300 bucks. Just say mm-hmm. 300 bucks. And today that one ounce coin is worth. It, it jumped up to the highest two thousand dollars this year. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're talking about seventeen hundred dollars. Um, it increased in value. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure she's keeping it for um, those reasons of you know being sentimental because of her father. But she did ask me to make that 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 um, corner ring, and I like I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm yeah, not going to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, and um, and it it, it, it kind of tickled me because she did not know the value of the coin today. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. and I and when she showed me, I was like, you know, that's worth about uh, at that time like fifteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, well, I guess I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I've been. Uh, have Have you looked much into like the, you know, because obviously uh, we had a gold confiscation back in you know the 1930s with uh, Teddy Roosevelt, and the yeah. loophole at that time was that if you had any coin that was pre-1933, it was considered a collectible. So uh, have you been looking into investing in more collector's coins just in case there's a gold confiscation? And I mean, because obviously people that, you know, uh, they fear that for Bitcoin being outlawed or gold being confiscated, kind of what, what's some ways you did, that you kind of uh, protect yourself in that way? That's interesting. Um, I, as Eli, um, you know, from Urban Lifestyle, he jokes me. He says, you're not a stacker, you're a collector. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I am. And compared yeah. to being a stacker, preparing for doomsday or whenever that, 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 <laughs> that dire day comes, right? I'll be pulling out some coins from um, maybe my, this is my Haitian um, gourd here. And I have mm-hmm. over here, I have this coin here. I'll pull out a whole bunch of other stuff that may not help me in that, in that downturn, right? But um, I can definitely bring out some things I love. If I do something like um, the pre-33s, which I think are um, beautiful coins, um, they'd be more for collecting. Um, mm-hmm. They are pretty pricey. They're a little yeah. bit more expensive on, because of the history, because of um, their significance. So you want to make sure, and I hope we get a chance to talk about this, having a buyer mm-hmm. um, at that crucial time because you don't want to, trade that unless you have something of equal value yeah. um, because it'll, you'll, you'll take a loss. You're looking at, um, they're a little bit costly. A one ounce pre-33 is, is a little bit more than maybe a newer American yeah. gold, gold Eagle. Yeah. So you want to you want to definitely have somebody in mind who can take that off you. Mm-hmm. Even, with your, even with your silver. Yeah, you yeah. want to make sure you have an exit strategy. Um, as you tried it out, you tested it, you went to that person and um, uh, went to that 
that corn shop or you went to a private market to make sure you can get rid of it because mm-hmm. it's worthless to you if you cannot do anything with it when you need it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I, I, th- I think that, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be challenging trying to, you know, sell it for, you know, a higher value because some people may see it as like, you know, oh, it's an ounce, you know, it's an ounce, mm-hmm. you know, or whatnot. Right. Um, but like, you know, the significance is like, okay, if, if uh, you know, the federal banks or, or the presidents, you know, were to be like, hey, we need to confiscate gold, we need to back the dollar back by gold, you know, things like that, it being a collector's, you know, uh, could give you a Protection. way out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and that's, that's a way of um, protecting it. I think years ago also, people made it um, a jury, and that mm-hmm. was another way to protect it. But will we get to that point again? Do you think it would get that bad? Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, um, the only way I, I can see that, you know, happening is, is if is if there is a, you know, a major some type of disaster or something like that. Um, but I, I think mm-hmm. that our technology is definitely so far ahead that uh, it's going to go move more towards the digital currencies and, and things of that right. nature as, as bankers, you know, try to fight for control over reserve currencies and, and being able to monitor you know citizens uh you know transactions and all those different things and so you know for I, me, I, like, yeah go ahead i'm sorry I, I think that when it comes down to that point gold and um, precious metals will be used for two things barter and when the economy resets mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah and, it, and it's also like you know money out of the system you know it's like kind of like you know how much do they know you got you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, <laughs> like it's a mystery. Like, yeah, you know, I, I, I lost it. Yeah. I had it, on, I had it on my finger, but it wound up falling off. I don't know where yeah, it was. I, I, melted, I melted it down. <laughs> I, I sent it over to JT to get melted down, and I, I don't know what happened. With it and I never, I, and I never received it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Like, definitely. Yeah. And anything to do with, like, obviously you have. Um, you know, bank accounts and things like that. So if you sell it and you have to convert it into a, you know, uh, the uh, the U.S. currency or whatnot, then obviously it's going to be a track record of that. But Most definitely. Uh, there's times where you can barter it, where you can, you know, like you can take that chain off your neck and be like, hey, hey, uh, you know, this is what I got. You know, yeah. let me get some groceries or whatever it may be, depending on how yeah. the situation is, you know. But well, look, I, I, when, I, when I bought this, I thought about three things. First, the chain goes, okay? Mm-hmm. Then I'll pop this coin out. I'll sell the bezel. Well, that's 14 karat with an onyx stone. Mm-hmm. And last, I would, I would get rid of the coin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so I, got, I can last maybe three days, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, what, what do you see as far as um, reactions that you get from people when you tell them about uh, precious metals? You know, obviously, uh, our yeah. youth today are, are more into more of like the Bitcoin and the uh, elect, elect, you know, like kind of like technology, electronic. I agree. All of those different things. And, and you know, I've, I've been getting more into that and just kind of seeing like a space for that. But it's not something that I will go long on or, or go uh, all in on, you know. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, just to have some diversity, what, what, do you, what kind of reactions do you get um, when you when you mention like, you know, hey, let's buy gold or, or your family, you know, like what, what kind of reactions yeah. are you getting from your family at first? Like, wow. Because for me, yes. like I had to, you know, I had to, you know, convince my wife like I had to, you know, we had to get into these conversations. I had to break all this history down and like I'm constantly like educating her. <laughs> and now, and now, now she's bought in. Now she's like. Yeah, we need gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I, yeah. It's, it was very difficult um, to do my intermediate family. It was mm-hmm. difficult because there was no, there was no worth to it. Mm-hmm. Understand, people? Okay, we know gold is expensive. We know gold has some worth, but okay, why are we putting our money into it? It's cash. It's about cash. It's about a house. It's about this. Um, until they understand the system how things work, that kind of helps people along. Um, mm-hmm. For my children, 
I, I, I make sure they each have a stack. Um, they have their own stack. My seven year old, you can't touch it. Mm-hmm. Cause you touch, you touch her coins. You might as well try to fight them. Yeah, and, yeah. um, that's how I'm, she loves, she loves her silver. She likes to play with it. She likes to look at it. And I even started her, um, a ch- uh, with me on my channel when I first came on, she was princess, um, stacker, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So she was, she was really into the part. Now my 20 year old, it was kind of, it's still a challenge. So what I do, I find things that spark their interest. I find jewelry. I maybe find a coin I can put as a pendant. Um, I may find uh, something I can make as a, a bracelet. Um, I may find a bar that my wife had found beautiful. So, you know mm-hmm. what? This nice Hindu bar here shows, you know, um, this, this um, position I'm, I'm, I, that I'm familiar with in yoga. Well, this, this is um, a pant bar. It, it's yours. So it was easy for me to do things like that when I sparked interest. Um, I have over here um, a Kobe Bryant um, jersey that I got made. Mm-hmm. Well, I got, got cousins who are into sports. It's easy to introduce people to things like that when you give them something that may, they find interest in, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the way that I do it. Um, when I talk to my little cousins, when I talk to relatives or people, friends out, I kind of try to find things that they can relate to, yeah. you know? Um, and that has helped me a lot. And that gives me an opportunity to talk about the history, to educate them on some things they may have not heard before. So um, I even did it with my barber. I, I told him one day I'm, I want to like um, do some uh, a barter. I said I want you to tell me if you want to take twenty five dollars in cash or American Silver Eagle. He just laughed. You know, I'm, I'm sure he would still want the cash and and the eagle as a gift. But the fact is, you got to have these <laughs> got to have this conversation in order so people can be aware, especially in our community. Yeah, yeah. Imagine, uh, I mean, I, obviously, your your, bar, your barber's price is a li- little bit higher than mine over here in Washington. But uh, <laughs> you know, if if I if I presented my barber with, you know, an American Eagle silver coin, or would you want, you know, this uh, fifteen bucks in cash, you know, and and th- yeah. that would definitely be an interesting uh, interaction, you know, because you know, I think that uh, a lot of people don't realize that, like, I can give a silver dime, mm-hmm. you know to a, a waiter or something and they may you know they may be like what's the dime doing you know like what's that gonna do I'm like hey you right. know, that's actually like three and a half dollars or you know whatnot and people right. don't really know the worth of it right but it, it's, it'll be an interesting conversation when you show them a roosevelt of the day and you mm-hmm. show them a, Merc- a mercury dime of yesterday and, and you give them that and you give them the sound test and you hey you know what and they that can spark an interest even if you don't leave it as a tip you may leave it as a gift you just mm-hmm. now introduce that person to the value of silver, yeah. you know? So we may cannot do it in the mainstream stores, but we can probably do it at the hot, the hot dog cart. Or we yeah, can do yeah. it here at the barbershop, maybe the beauty salon, maybe people you deal with interaction like that, you know, who mm-hmm. still use cash, you know, um, that may be a conversation that you can share. Um, that's what I, I, I try to do. And, um, like I said, I give it as give precious metals away as gifts, and it gives me an opportunity to um, talk to them about it. And also, it's perfect. I make corn rings, mm-hmm. and that's that's an opportunity for me to give something of value to people as well. And I hope that the coin around can give them that history and appreciation of holding some um, a precious metal in the hand. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, man, I, I appreciate you coming on today. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to hit you up uh, to get some uh, either some rings or, or a necklace made or something. You know, we we, we got to do some work. Uh, so where where can the people uh, find you and uh, place any orders or things like that? Where, where can they find you? You can find me at um, jt um, cornrings dot com. That's my website. If you want to check out anything that I have going on for this month and making my rings. You can try um, find me at JT Corn Rings that um, JT Corn Rings on YouTube and JT Corn Rings on Instagram. And every Sunday at two o'clock, me and Eli go to um, get together and we do Silver Talk, which we talk about precious metals and things happening in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all got to bring me on there someday. I, I've been kind of look, looking at that. <laughs> yeah, we matter of fact, we talked about having you on real soon. Like uh, he wants you on like t- tomorrow. 
<laughs> That'd be nice. Um, I'm hoping uh Yankee stacking uh to hit me back for an interview. He read my message, but he ain't uh he ain't hit me back. So I'm yeah, like, I'm Yankee, like, he'll, Yankee get back to you. He'll get back to you. Like, hey, um, he's, 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 he's a good guy. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's a, he's a he's a good guy, and um, I'll make sure I will make sure I hit him at DM to make sure he, he answer that a little quicker. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm just a new guy on the block. You know, I, I've been uh. Yeah. You know, doing a lot of this research and, you know, uh, so my numbers ain't really that big, but, you know, I've been building up my email list and um, mm -hmm. having quite a few um, people on my email list and sparking some interest. And But you have some awesome content mm -hmm. and you, you have a gift of explaining it. And, yeah, um, yeah. That that right there is going to grow it. Um, and the way that you present it is going to be gold. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what I, I love about it. It's clear. It's to the point. It's something you can share. Yeah, definitely. Um, so if you continue that, you are, you're gonna it's gonna be awesome. Um, down from the intro, you can tell you're a musician from the mm -hmm. intro because everything's <laughs> clear to the cut. The sound is good. Uh -huh. e everything hooks you. So you I mean you're doing great. I think I really love it. Yeah, appreciate it, man. So I'm I'm gonna be sure to leave your links and everything in the comments and descriptions mm -hmm. of, of this podcast and um, also when I upload the episode on YouTube. So I appreciate you coming on today, my brother, man. I, I hope that um you and your family stay blessed and, and prosperous. And uh thank you for joining the money level show. I appreciate it, man. You take care. Yep, you too. Peace. Mm -hmm.